The great Irish poet W.B. Yeats once wrote, "Had I the heavens and brighter cloths inwrought with gold and silver thread, well, I suppose here in Waterloo we do have the heavens and brighter cloths. They were discovered in this cathedral in 1773 when they were demolishing the old medieval cathedral. The, the vestments were, were discovered in a trunk, in a vault, and the reason they were put there was because, of course, Oliver Cromwell was outside the gates of the city, or his army was outside the gates of the city, and he was about to take the city, and, of course, he would have destroyed all of the religious objects as he was a Puritan at the time. So the, the church men, we presume church men, bury them in a steel chest in, in the cathedral, and, of course, as Cromwell's army won the victory on the day, the, the Roman Catholics couldn't come back into the cathedral again. So they remained there for 124 years, until the cathedral was demolished by the Waterford architect John Roberts to build this magnificent classical cathedral. Of course, when they were buried, they were already antiques at that stage. They were nearly 300 years old at that stage. They were first made in about 1460. The beautiful velvet, the green and red velvet, is made in Florence, in Italy. And the ophrys, so that's the decorated panel. The word ophrys comes from the fact that it's gold. It means it comes from a gold, Abyssinian gold, I think it comes from. And these beautiful decorated panels were made in Bruges in present-day Belgium, so they're, they're a really wonderful compilation. And they were bought by the Dean of Watford, and we, we know he bought them because his will survives in his book, his register, and he refers to them several times in his wills, and he, he wills them to the next Dean, of course. And the reason, of course, he, he bought such beautiful vestments was because he built a chantry chapel, and in the 1460s and 1480s, everybody in Europe, including Ireland here, were obsessed with going to purgatory and not going straight to heaven. So the best way of getting out of purgatory was to have priests say masses for your soul and to give donations to have priests say masses for your soul. And in this beautiful chantry chapel that he built so that people would come and say masses eternally for his soul, it was endowed with huge amounts of property, he had the priests wear these wonderful vestments. And he knew at that time that they were very special and that's why he, he actually specifically put mentions them in his will. And very interestingly, for the next 150 years, they constantly appear in the records of the city. In great events in the city, when, when, when the church was, it was uh, the, the Catholic Church was on, under a lot of pressure, the um, and the Anglican Church was established here. The mayor and the city council actually bought these vestments from the church, so as to keep them in Catholic hands. The the city council was still Catholic, even though the state religion had been established here by Queen Elizabeth in 1588. So they were in Catholic hands, and then in the early 17th century, in, in 1637. The then Church of Ireland, under King um, Charles I of England, said that these should be actually used in Protestant church service. So the mayor was forced, the then mayor was forced to hand them back to the, to the Protestant church. So they were back in the Protestant church in, in 1637. And then four or five years later, the Catholics rose in rebellion and they controlled the medieval cathedral that was on this site and all the treasures in it, including these beautiful vestments. The, these are certainly treasures from heaven. And in an Irish context, they're the finest set of textiles to survive in the country. They're, they're just magnificent. And people obviously always knew they were so important that, that, that that's why they're preserved. But I think also in terms of, of the museum, they'll be a centerpiece. And I think they'll be something that will, will give people a window into the richness of the Middle Ages. We often think of people in the Middle Ages as living drab and colorless lives and drab colored clothes. but when you came into a cathedral or any great church in the Middle Ages, you had stained glass windows, you had candlelight, you had gold vestments and sil uh, gold and, and silver chalices, and and then the gold vestments, and this they must have looked quite spectacular in the Middle Ages, and the whole mystery of heaven. Remember, people were living in fairly, fairly rough and ready conditions. There's no paved streets, there's no running water, there are no such thing as showers or baths or anything like that. So. The, the type of lives people li lived would have been very basic. And then to come to devotion in a church and see these, it was almost a glimpse of heaven. And I would imagine it was something like this that Yeats saw that inspired him to write that wonderful, that wonderful poem, Had I the Heavens and Brighter Cloths.